Welcome to Italian Innovators. I'm Luca Cottini and today I'm in the company of Emanuele Cappelli, designer, creative director at Cappelli Identity Design and professor in brand and graphic design. Emanuele is the founder of the studio, which was established in Rome in 2010 and the pioneer of dynamic and interactive branding. As both an entrepreneur and an academic at the Rome University of Fine Arts, his work lies at the intersection of digital marketing, content creation, identity design, strategic planning, and sustainability. We'll talk more about the studio during our conversation. For now, let me welcome you to the show and thank you from the heart for being with us. Thank you for uh, having me. It's a pleasure sharing my story with you. So today we'll talk about design as a key platform to fashion an integrated communication, as an interactive language creating a brand's dynamic identity and as a strategic form of content marketing. We'll examine the original case of your studio and explore the relationship between design thinking innovative planning and academic research. And I want to start from your story now and the profile of your company. How did you get from academia to design and what is the distinctive core of your work? Well, Cappelli Identity Design is an independently owned Italian design studio. Uh, We do multidisciplinary projects all over the world from branding to visual design, to marketing and strategy. It's a boutique design agency. We work with big clients and we have a wide network of suppliers so we can get each job right. But can I tell you my story by talking about three places and three mages? First, that's Cinecittà, then the garage, and finally, the Venice Biennale. I was lucky enough to grow up around Cinecittà. It's Italian cinema, the Italian dream, and La Dolce Vita. You can see lots of interesting people there, and you can create any fantasy you want. Also, it's at the center of history and culture. Did you see Paolo Sorrentino's film, The Great Beauty? Absolutely, that's kind of the last Italian movie who won the Academy Award. <laughs> Part of it was shot in front of the Roman aqueducts near my home. I grew up there. But I felt I had to do things my own way. So I rented a garage in the area and started working with a colleague. Unfortunately, things went south quickly. Scam, part of a national scam. It was a real mess. I was weak, insecure. I had lots of money to pay back. When I got a call from the Venice Biennale, I thought it was just another bad joke. It was actually a little surreal. I didn't really know what to think. I didn't believe what was happening to me. Also, I was afraid to be happy. All I did for years was think about money, how much I owed and how to pay it off. I had to convince myself that one of my dreams was actually coming true. That dream saved me. I was reborn, born again in Venice. Definitely in Venice, you had your first occasion to showcase your work and then kind of that really jump-started uh, your studio. Uh, now, I want to ask you, how does your academic background enriched this work as an entrepreneur and vice versa. I think knowledge changes over time and keeps projects moving and flowing. 
The word project comes from the Latin word projectum, to throw something forward, to aim at something. Imagine an archer and a target. He needs to be strong to hold the bow, to keep it steady, to pull in the string back, to release the arrow and to hit the target, of course. The stronger we are, the further the arrow will go. The more we know, the more visionary our project can be. My academic and professional life go together well. I teach the dynamic brand methodology and we spend a lot of time trying things out and experimenting. There are few limits in academia. Obviously, things are a little different in business. We explore and experiment too. But there's less time and we must produce something more quickly. At the studio, we involve lots of different people. It bridges these experiences. At Capelli Identity Design, we are looking for the best solutions. So we like having talented people around. It means we all grow collectively. And definitely the uh, work of teaching is part of this ongoing communication where theory and practice merge together in the same way as uh, in a marketing communication or in a, a business communication. Now your firm focuses on design, in other words, visual appealing communication, which is the story. Why is visual design such an important component of effective communication, in your opinion? Visual expression without content has no importance. It's ephemeral. It's fleeting. Here today, gone tomorrow. That's why we look for strong concepts behind every single project we develop and every story we tell. Now, in one of your recent uh, projects, uh, you developed a font called the Felliniana, which is based on the handwriting of Federico Fellini. Can you describe the genesis of the idea and why a font is a different maker in a content marketing campaign? The Fellini font began when I met his niece. I met Simonetta working on the Canfield Festival project about her uncle. She gave me an hour to discuss the project, but then something wonderful happened. We were talking and all of a sudden she invited me to look at some of Fellini's letters to his wife, Giulietta Massina. That was a fantastic scene. <laughs> We read them for hours and it was intense. It was like absorbing all the tenderness in the words, just holding the letters and looking at them. When I went back to the studio, I told people what happened. We decided to redesign Fellini's handwriting in the font to relieve those feelings again. And so, the Felliniana font was born. We have a book about the Fellini exhibition that uh, came out in December. It's called Ritratto Rosso. That same year, we started working on uh, another font about the greatness of Olivetti. We wanted to capture the philosophy of an industry and an area of Italian style. The font is called OTL22, after the famous Olivetti typewriter Lettera 22. And definitely uh, I dedicated several episodes to Olivetti uh, 
there will be occasions to know more about Marcello Nizzoli's really masterpiece. Um, now, in your approach to designing effective content strategies, you emphasize dynamic branding as a key solution to generate identities that are both coherent and mutable across time and space. So branding, not as a top-down communication, but rather as a two-way process of reception and construction of new meanings. As for a work of art, which is born in a particular context with a specific content, yet is also enriched and reactivated by audiences of different ages, cultures, and geographies. How does your model of dynamic branding, or as you call it, the sun model, help you achieve originality? How do you maintain and at the same time multiply a unique identity? This is a complex and uh, deep question. Let me try to answer it. Dynamic brand is a design method. You can use it with startups and you can use it with big companies. We have another book on this theme, our first monograph. It's published by Skira and it's distributed worldwide by Artbook and Thames and Dudson. Basically, the dynamic brand methodology identifies certain values and then builds a system of identity around those values. These values are only positive, the best and most ideal. In this way, we can imagine how these values align with other values and how new relationship can grow out of these alignments. Having an identity allows us to be a part of a more complex ecosystem. We are all different, but each one can have their own identity. The Zen model goes beyond the conventional vertical communication architecture. It's not only activities and touch points, it's relationship building. So dynamic branding helps resolve other problems uh, too, like when we remember a commercial, but we don't remember the brand. In Capelli Identity Design, values are at the center. And then every visual representation that shoots out of the center is part of a coherent tool. The consistency in uh, a, this kind of uh, integrated communication allows us to optimize budgets and uh, to grow a brand and uh, its reputation more quickly. Now, building such an integrated and agile communication requires intera constant interactions, not only with viewers or consumers, but also with differently skilled professionals and multiple agents of meaning. If you think of a still life painting, you can observe it either as a fixed image of a dead nature, as in the Italian expression natura morta, or as the Chirico pointed out, as silent life, continuously rendering a sense of livelihood and enacting complex meanings in its internal analogies and combinations of its signifiers. Now, if we apply this reasoning to digital content, how, do you, how does one build a communication system that does not end into a natura morta, but rather achieves perennial livelihood or original freshness. First of all, the word consumer has been replaced by person these days. Media has changed communication radically. The relationship between the target and the brand has changed Today, you can interact directly with a brand in many ways. 
For example, the beauty of an artist like the Kiriko is in uh, the metaphysical space and the light and silence of his paintings. You can read things into it. You can give the image value and meaning. It nights our curiosity uh, because we are attracted to the content and the story behind it. Consistent communication is like that. It lets people perceive, feel and memorize the strength of the message. If we, if we can also hit the right emotional nerves, we can get the most our, our interaction. Like when you hear Beethoven's fifth. What happens to you? What do you feel? Something absolutely memorable. <laughs> there are a few examples in the world of communication when we experience both timelessness and nowness at the same moment. That's dynamic. This is what we strive for with our dynamic brand approach. Uh, in your recent book for Skira, you stress the difference between recognizing a logo and knowing the brand. What does it mean to know a brand? What processes, what sort of influence lies between a passing trend and, and a, a long-lasting and dynamic style? Recognizing a logo means tracing the graphics to something specific. That something can be a company a, or an event. It may be a sign of belonging. And sometimes it may mean recognizing something that is not interesting. Knowing a brand is a little different. It's a deeper relationship. It goes beyond an image. It's more than visual recognition. But building a relationship takes time. We need time to give and receive trust. Because a relationship is built on emotional assumptions shared values and lifestyles. Today, we can connect with our brands whenever we want. It can be continuous 24-7, fluid over time, and mainly in a virtual space. So, in our approach, we also appreciate diversity. You need it to grow something. It also allows us to build different identities. Diversity broadens our horizons and our experiences. My thinking is identity only exists when there is diversity, when there are the opposites. You need the sun for shade. Without white, there's no black, and uh, there would be no color sator. Between black and white, that's where we open the window on the wall and all of its shades and nuances. With more solutions, we can choose. We can forge new territory. When we are true to ourselves, to who we are, we can move away from accepted patterns, standards, rules, repetition and anonymity. Remember, identity only exists when there's diversity. And to your point, about trends, 
I think that trends are like a match. They burn out quickly, like one night stands. They run out of passion fast. And definitely identity is something that develops over time, uh, but maintaining its own core. Um, it, I like the association between identity and diversity in the sense that an identity is something flexible that matures over time, but that conserves its um, core elements uh, over time. Now, if I may, I would like to close with an experiment. How would you promote a substantive and dynamic knowledge of a work of art through dynamic branding? And how would you apply your idea of dynamic branding to teaching? It's an ongoing, interesting experiment. A work of art, lives for people. The dynamic brand communicates to people. They are two shades of the same color, two sides of the same coin. But the starting point is different. The dynamic brand translates a message for a target. It asks some basic questions. How can we break down walls that separate the client and the target? And how can we link them? But the process is alive. People and nature will complete things. And, um... I think also that interactivity um, that, that you describe is really something that develops within, you use the word relationship before, uh, as something completely uh, unpredictable, fresh, and always new. Uh, but if I may go further, how would you apply dynamic branding on the academic values of the humanities, for example? I'm doing it. I've been teaching this approach since uh, 2012 and uh, spreading the world around Italy and uh, the world. Exploring and thinking about aesthetics is fundamental, not just in universities and learning institutions, but obviously in the work I do too. Of course, yeah, I'm lucky. Living in Italy means uh, uh, your eyes are always full of aesthetic value uh, every day, everywhere. Uh, we support culture in Italy uh, by promoting public democratic education that is uh, accessible to all. And my students are young, so I am grateful to have the opportunity to influence the way they look at the world and the work of design. The dynamic brand reflects how we are all dealing with media today. People are included now. Uh, we are not just passively consuming things. People are protagonists on both sides of the equation now, both as designers and as, as users and influencers. The relationship is not top-down anymore, it's horizontal. And so waking up our sensitivity to aesthetics is important because it shares the center with us. Seeking uh, harmony is the balance between content and form. It means that form is connected to function, not just passively seen. Aesthetics continues to surprise and uh, it is ageless. Well, thank you. And this definitely ties up with all the conversation we had on uh, communication art as a communication, but also teaching as a form of communication where the two-way horizontal model is a way that uh, generates 
always new fresh content while maintaining its original core. Now, thank you very much for this conversation. And starting from the story and the method of your studio, of your firm, Capelli Identity Design, we examine the brand or branding as really an integrated form of communication. And we explore the connection between visual design, digital marketing, and value creation. So thank you very much for being with us today. It was a real pleasure chatting with you. Thanks to you, Luca. It was a pleasure chatting with you today. Bye-bye. Ciao. And thanks everybody for listening and watching. And if you like this video, I invite you to, to subscribe to this channel or to the newsletter on the webpage www.italianinnovators.com to receive notifications of new episodes and know more about the project. You can also follow me on LinkedIn in my personal profile or on Instagram at Italian Innovators uh, for updates, news and additional materials. And you can also follow as well Emanuele as well uh, on uh, in, in Capella Identity Design on his uh, Instagram and LinkedIn profiles. Thank you for your support. Arrivederci e alla prossima.